pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. the children to move forward. Each appears before God in Zion. 
Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tent of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing that is he withhold from those who walk in slainless. The Lord Almighty blesses is the one who trusts in you. And now, please hear the scripture lesson from the book of Ezra. The reading this morning is from Ezra, uh, chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. When the builders started to lay the foundation of the temple, the priests in their robes took their places with trumpets in their hands, and the Levites of the clan of Asphah stood there with cymbals. They praised the Lord according to the instructions handed down from the time of King David. They sang the Lord's praises, repeating the refrain, the Lord is good and his love for Israel is eternal. Everyone shouted with all their might, praising the Lord because the work on the foundation of the temple had been started. Many of the older priests, Levites, and head of, heads of clan had seen the first temple and as they watched the foundation of this temple being laid, they cried and wailed. But the others who were there shouted for joy. No one could distinguish between the joyful shouts and the crying because the noise they made was so loud that it could be heard for miles. That is the word of the Lord. this morning for the sermon before I start. I was feeling sort of sad for Kevin Spicer because he's such a huge Pats fan and today's kind of I don't know, ambivalent sort of day for Pats fans, isn't that? And I thought as I looked at the text, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put Kevin in a better mood. I'm going to do a first person narrative sermon because he keeps on asking me to do one and I haven't done one in like five years. And Kevin's not here. Oh. You tell him, okay, this is for him. <laughs> Thank goodness for Norcam. <laughs> to set this up, uh, we are in the 19th chapter of the 31 chapters of the story, the book of the entire Bible, all the events of the Bible. We are at the end of the kingdom of Israel. Israel has fallen, uh, finally has been conquered uh, by a couple different nations. And so we are at about 600 years-ish, there's a time span here, but about 600 years before Jesus is born. And again, this has been five years, so I think when I was younger, I was a little bit more um, fearless or something, and now I'm like, yikes! <laughs> so we're going to have fun with this. But before I begin, let us pray. Lord God, we're so grateful this morning for your word that can be written over two and a half millennia ago, and yet can speak to us today. We're grateful for your faithfulness to us. We're grateful for the power of the Holy Spirit that enlivens our lives, that enlivens these words. I pray that you would be with us during this message, that you would help me to think and to speak clearly. I pray in Jesus' name. But look at this! I can't believe it. I 
never thought we would see the temple again. Seventy years the temple has been destroyed. And there it is. Well, some say it's not as big as the other one, but God is just as big. There it is. What a celebration we just had. Did you hear the shouting? The shouting people were so happy. And then the crying. I have to say, some of those tears were joy, but for me, sorrow. Sorrow. Because you know, now my husband Dave, God rest his soul, he always believed that we would see this wonderful thing, but I gave up. I gave up a long, long time ago. When you've seen what I've seen, it causes you to doubt, and I did. And so, I cried, tears of sorrow. Well, what happened, you said, what happened? You've heard it, I know you're too young, you didn't see it. I'm glad you didn't see it, because it was so horrible. Well, let's, we'll back up, we'll back up. I was just a girl, 14 years old, and my parents told me, we have found a boy for you, his name is Abe, you love him, he's wonderful, he comes from such a good family. And of course, I can't meet him until we're married. So I said, my sister, my younger sister, she's wonderful. She goes, she hides behind a bush, right behind his house. She goes right behind the bush, and she looks over. And she looks to see if he's handsome, of course. This is what we want to know. She looks from behind the bush, and she comes running back with the report. And she says, Ruthie, Ruthie, his ears are enormous. He's got huge ears. He looks like an elephant. And I said, I said oh, Lord, this is what you're going to give me, I said. But I got to the wedding, and then I thought the years were kind of cute. I think that he's kind of handsome, I thought to myself. I think this may be okay. And I talked to him and later I teased him about those years. And he said, Ruthie, they helped me listen to God better. And he did listen to God better. So we were married and they, his parents gave us a little um, spot on their property. They had cows. cows. The whole family had cows. And they did various things with the cows, the milk, the, uh, the meat, sometimes leather. Leather is very complicated in our culture, but they know how to do the leather and they know how to do all the cleanliness things. And things. So my husband, Abe, this is what he does. It's a good living. We walk into town about two miles, two hours. We walk into town and we can trade our things and go to the market. And it's all wonderful. And I'm setting up my home. A young bride, so proud of what she had. I remember one of the first mornings I walked out, my job, to go get the water. It's always been my job to get the water. That's part of the reason my bones are so tired. Walk out to get the water, and it's early in the morning, and the hills are right here. Jerusalem over there, the hills over here. And the sun's coming up just to outline the hills, and the birds are chirping, and it's so still, and the cows aren't moving yet. And I said, God, you have blessed me. I have, I have a husband, I have a house, I have this water. I felt so close. It was my moment with God, and I would come back to the house and go about my day. Well, it wasn't too long. I found out I was expecting a child. Everyone is so excited. Me, most of all, my younger sister turns green with envy. She did. She right away, she, she was going to be married very soon. And she and lots of blessings and lots of happiness. And I remember going into this, the Jerusalem again to trade some things and buy some things to stop by the temple and say, thank you, God, for what you've given me. My husband was always there talking to people. He always went. He's the first tenth of everything we have. What a faithful man. So I stopped by the temple. I'm there in the market, and there's this man on the corner just shouting, ranting, blah, 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 blah. The king does not love God. The king is bad. The king is wrong. The nation will fall. I'm, oh, my goodness, please. I don't think he was right in the head. What can I do? Why do I care? I can't do anything about a king who doesn't love God. Quiet, I said. I went on my way, got my things, back to my house. But then Abe came home and he said, no, it's not good. 
Rufi, it's not good. There's this Nebuchadnezzar, this Babylon, this big, strong army. They're coming. It's not good. We're going to be in danger. And not even a week. And the armies came through on the main road. We could hear them. We're far from the main road, but we could hear them because of the chariots and the rumbling of all that metal and the horses. And they came and they burned our city. They tore down the palace. They tore down the temple. The flames were so high. It was awful. It was like hell. Looking and seeing hell in your own life. Right there, the flames and the smoke and the smell. It was terrifying. And we were so thankful we were far enough away that they did not see us. But Abe said, no, this is not the end. And sure enough, a day later, in come the soldiers. And they said, you have to go. It's time to go. You need to leave. Well, what about my things, my beautiful house? You need to leave. We had to pack up our anything we could carry and begin walking. And I, would, I want to tell you something. Ladies, you know, if you have carried a child, you know how tired you are in those beginning months of pregnancy. And walk and walk and walk in the tears. And Abe's parents wouldn't come with us. They said, we're too old. We can't travel. We're staying. We don't care what they do. And so we left them. And I never saw them again. My heart was breaking. And we walked and we walked and we walked. And we get to Babylon. And they put us out in like a camp. And they gave us nothing. There was a well so far away. They gave us nothing. And the only good thing was that before, my sister had lived far away with her new husband. But now... Now she was right by me because we're all stacked on top of each other like animals. And so I hang on to her and I cry about all that we've lost. <coughs> my husband, Dave, he's faithful. He says, oh, God, this is just for a short time. God will come do this. And I just didn't want to look at him. And I remember going out to get the water much farther now. And there were hills again, just like in... Jerusalem, and the sun would come up behind the hill, and I would hear the birds, and I would not feel God. I felt alone, I felt abandoned, and I got hard. And I would turn my back, and I would go back with my water. Then my son was born. A healthy baby boy. You would think joy. You would think this is where things turn around for Ruthie. She's a mother now. No. I cried. I cried. I couldn't even take my boy to the temple to give him his name. And what am I going to tell him? Worship the Lord our God, the God who forgot us, the God who allowed us to be conquered, the God who has brought nothing but pain. That's what I want to tell my son. You belong to God. I don't think so. Well, Abe wasn't having any of that. He said, Ruthie, we are going to name this child. And there's a new thing and a new way. The temple's gone, but we get ten men together. And the ten men together, they can say the prayers. And they can do the name, even though we don't have the I don't care. I say, fine, Abe. Fine. fine. So he does. And our son is named. I wish I could say that running after a little boy and then later another little boy and then a girl and then a boy and a girl and a girl. That was a blessing. Three and three. I wish I could say that this would have brought joy to me. But I felt betrayed and I felt alone. And I thought, fine. God, you forgive me, I'll forgive you. And I didn't say my prayers. And I didn't cry that I couldn't bring my children to the temple. Who would want to? I let it be his thing. To be honest, it caused me to lose some respect for him. I thought, why do you believe in this God? It's like a crutch. It's like a crutch. It's like a pretty story. I mean, it's a fantasy. This isn't real. But he had to do it so he could stay strong. He grew apart. Well... Nebuchadnezzar, no longer the ruler. There's some new ruler. The language is hard. I forget all these names. Shabbos, Shabbos, or something. I, I don't know. There's a new ruler of Babylon. And then, now we start hearing a new thing. 
By now, I am not Ruthie. I am now Bubba, Buffy, because my son has had that son. Now I have some grandchildren. Now I have some joy, maybe just a little bit. Maybe I'm relaxing a little bit. But this news that comes in from my little grandson, Bobby, Bobby, did you hear what Papa said? What? There was a, a, a fight, a war, far, far away. This time he didn't see it. Far, far away. And Babylon is gone. I look around, nothing has changed to me, right? Babylon is gone now. It's Assyria. A new king has come. And this is good. I said, I don't care. I don't care. Go play with your choice. Thank you. I talked to Abe later. He's all excited. Cyrus, a new king. Okay. But sure enough, Abe was right. He said, here, God will show God's faithfulness to us. Here is what will happen. And Cyrus, he heard the suffering of our people. He heard the suffering of the other people that Babylon had made to leave their homes. He heard and he listened. God remembered him. He listened. And he said, go home. You can go home. And so this time we pack up. We're packing with joy. This time I'm not carrying one young, tiny little baby. I'm carrying my children and my grandchildren and everybody. And I'm old and boy, I I want to say something to the young women out there. You think that you are tired. <laughs> Wait until you are 84. I had to walk. I started to walk. They were good to me. This two-month journey, they let me ride almost the entire way. They said, Bubba, Bubba, you take it easy. And so we got back to Jerusalem three years from this time, three years ago. I went right to my house. I wanted to see my house. I wanted to see what happened. Was it still there? To start to work, that's what the women did. The men went to the temple. And Abe's tears just flowed. He was one of the ones who remembered. He could tell the young men. He could say, this is where it was, and this is how it was, and I remember this, and here, the altar. And he helped the young men carry the big stones and put them out for the altar. It was the first thing they did. And he helped them to offer that sacrifice on that new altar standing in the middle of where the temple used to be. He was so happy. He was so happy. He said, God has been faithful. Perhaps. Perhaps. Now he went to rest with his fathers just a little while after, and I miss him. But I'm happy for him that he got to see that. He got to see that. And so we waited, and they built, and then they stopped building, and then they built, and then they need more supplies. We waited, and my grandchildren now are getting bigger. And now there's this beautiful well, yes, a little smaller, still so beautiful. And so when we saw it, we laughed and we shouted and we cried. What a wonderful thing that God has done. Do you know what I have learned? Who forgot who? I'm asking you. Who forgot who? Did God forget us? Or did we forget God? Did God forget me? Or did I forget God? I believe that I forgot God. I believe that God was faithful. Now I can see this. And I will tell anyone that will listen to an old lady. Well, you have listened. Thank you. You've listened long enough. I'm going to go on. But maybe I'll see you out some morning getting water, and we can look at the hills and see the sun and hear the birds and feel the presence of our God. what I did was smart then because I took off my glasses so you guys were in costume too. Okay. <laughs>
worked out. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are going to celebrate Holy Communion together. Another way that we can remember God. Uh, keep in mind that the bread is gluten-free. Uh, you will be coming up the center of the aisles and going back to your seat on the side of the aisles after you receive uh, the host. Uh, the who cares to come may come. Oh, I need a um, scout. Who do I have? Calvin and Jackson. Oh, and Robbie, would you just like me? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We you lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth, you alone were God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. In his baptism and in table fellowship, he took his place with sinners. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce when the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, Delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night when he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast of his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The table is prepared. Please come.
to the world to serve with God's love. It's now time for our offering. Let us pray. Lord God, we're so grateful that you see us through all seasons of our lives, that your love remains steadfast, even though ours may falter or fail. We thank you for your constancy and your patience with us. Help us to inspire others who may be struggling with their faith. God, please receive this offering as an expression of our thanks and gratitude for all that you do in the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
may be seated for the announcement. All right, we have um, a, a number who have asked to speak uh, for announcements. We'll start with Sam. Yes, sir. Announcements? Uh, yes, on Thursday at 6, the Mellon Balls men's group is meeting at church, and we're going to Costco to shop for our free breakfast, which is on Saturday. Okay, Thursday at 6 o'clock p.m. Thank you. Susan. Um, for events at the church, instead of giving up something, I thought we would give something. <laughs> and so um, each week I'll give us a first to meditate over and an item from the food pantry to buy. Um, so this week I'll give you a hint. I'll give you the first on Tuesday. So come and enjoy cake and breakfast. I'll give you a verse, but I want you to think it would be fruitful and think of items from the food pantry like canned fruit and all right. Sorry, and, and I guess the one thing is, um, there's 40 days of Lent, so I'd like to have at least 40 items every week. So, kind of a challenge to everybody. All right, Suzanne. This is Suzanne's brainchild. I love it. 40-40 food, food challenge. Um, so 40 items each week for the food pantry. And the theme for next week is fruit. You'll see more about that in the newsletter. But bring in a fruit product for the food pantry. We'll stick them up here and get to 40 every week. I know. Awesome. Uh, Norma, why don't you come up? Um, and Laura, you'll be next. On behalf of the trustees, I wanted to update you on what we have done and what is being done in your church. I hope that many of you have noticed the new lighting out of the foyer. It's nice and bright out there now. LED lights were installed by my son Robin and Kevin. And it's also my hope to put them in classroom one, the youth room, and eventually here in the sanctuary. A new thermostat was installed in the parlor. This can be accessed remotely, thus saving the fuel that's on many occasions the heat has been left up and run all night causing a little nightmare for our trust, um, treasurer. It is hoped that we can put these in the educational wing and in this room. They're a little costly, but they will replace themselves rather quickly. First impressions, Rick McKeeley said to us, are important. And it'd be nice to be able to replace the flooring, especially in the foyer, in the front hallway. And we'd like to eventually be able to do in here. This isn't a project, though, that we feel it's going to be done overnight. We're looking into many different options. So hopefully, within maybe the next year, we will be able to accomplish all of that. We've not forgotten the kitchen. The melon balls keep reminding us. Um, it is our hope to have it done this summer. And we can celebrate with our first breakfast in the fall. If I can, I'll steal a quote from Herman. It's not easy being green. We must do, all of us do our part to help the environment of the church and our needs. February is a month of love. So let's love our environment. Let's love our church. In the foyer will be a presentation board, which Robert will show you. There are envelopes attached to it, and on the hearts it might list a dollar amount and a project. Some do not have a, um, an amount or a project. Feel free to take any of them, place them in this um, offering over the next month or so, and enable us to help our church grow in proper order to support ourselves and the community. Thank you. Remember, we appreciate your leadership and your help in having us be green. Uh, and Lori. Give me some money. I'm just telling you about this first or last. Okay. Hi. Um, those of you who don't know me, I'm Lori Downs, and I am facil facilitating a group uh, called the Daniel Plan. We're going to be starting on Monday, February 15th. 
Um, that's the Monday after Ash Wednesday. It's going to go from 7 to 9 p.m. in classroom number four. I am facilitating a six-week Get Healthy plan called the Daniel Plan, which I just told you. Um, it is named the Daniel Plan after the prophet Daniel, who committed himself to prayer and a healthy lifestyle. This program is not just diet and fitness. It also focuses on prayer, mindfulness, mindfulness, and socially connecting to support each other in whole body and soul health. Um, if you're going to participate for the best experience, obtain the associated book. It's entitled The Daniel Plan, 40 Days to a Healthier Life by Rick, by Rick Warren. Um, I actually have a sample out back if you want to take a picture of it with your phone so that you can find it. Um, it's available at the library, Christian bookstores. Uh, you can see uh, Sam. He works for the Christian bookstores. He can get the book for you at a discount. And it's also on Amazon.com. If you could, uh, if you want to participate, please leave your name and your email on the sign-up sheet on the entrance. And now if you could just sit back and enjoy. Um, and Rachel's going to put a one-minute clip on that better explains what the plan is. Thank you. No plan. more than a diet, far, far more than a diet. Diets usually include fitness and food. The Daniel Plan also includes focus and friendship and faith. It gives people a roadmap to get healthy with specific instructions, number one, and number two, more importantly, it gives them the power to do it together. Because there is nothing more powerful in community than helping people change. The thing that I love about the Daniel Plan is we get better together. When we do this as a group, it is so powerful and so exciting because as you get well, you're helping other people get well too. for being the editor of our Aldersgate Almanac newsletter for the last 18 years. Sally, will you raise your hand? Sally, because of 
changing technology, Sally and I talked about it, and we agree that the weekly email will be the main uh, communication at this point, but she will print those for people who do not have computers at their house and mail them to the people who would have received the newsletter before. So we appreciate Sally's uh, service for so long, almost 100 editions of the Alders Gate Almanac. All right. Um, if you will, yes. Somebody has a birthday today. Oh my goodness, thank you. Albert Staples is 80 years old. We have to sing happy birthday. His birthday is today.